guys. This is Dr. Porter Utley again. So I want to continue um, our talking about the systematics project and move on from creating a nexus file, which is what I covered in the first uh, screencast, to how is it that we analyze our data in uh, the phylogenetics program when Claytonona. The first thing you're going to want to do as a group, and I'm going to show you how to do this on my computer, but the way that you do it on the herbarium computer is exactly the same. Okay. The first thing you're going to want to do as a group um, is you're going to want to create a folder on the computer desktop for your group. And what I've done is I've created a folder called Super Awesome, so that's the name of my group. Into that folder, you're going to want to import your Nexus files, the files that you created and you can email them to yourself and put them in to your folder on the desktop. You can create your Nexus files on the herbarium computer and save them into a folder on, um, on the desktop, however you wish to do it. So if I open up the folder I created for my group, which is a super awesome folder, I have in it the two Nexus files that um, I created in the previous podcast that I did. So what we need to do is we need to open up the Nexus files in Wincleta Nona, the, the phylogenetic software program we're going to use. So I'm going to close this down. So I'm going to go to my documents on the desktop. I'm going to go to phylogenetic software. And then I'm going to open up Wincleta. And this is the way it looks. And you'll do exactly those exact same steps using the herbarium computer. So the first thing we need to do is we need to open up our file. And so let's deal with our morphological data first. Okay, so here are our taxa, and here are our characters and character states okay, that, we, um, that we created uh, before. So what you're going to want to remember about Wincleta is that it always labels the first character as a zero. So if you want that to be different, you actually need to change that manually, and you can do that in the character dialog. So you can say, I want character 1 to be actually character 1, and I want character 2 to be 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Okay. So now, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to analyze our data. So you go to the Analyze, men, uh, go to the analyze menu, you hit Heuristics, we're going to use all the default settings in the program, and we're going to tell it to search. Okay. And in two seconds, <laughs> it produced the tree that you guys probably worked on for quite a bit of time for the exam. Okay. The, the first thing you're going to want to do is take a look at this screen. So here's your tree. Your, where is your data? Your data is in the Win Data interface. Okay, so all you have to do is hit Win Data in the interface menu, and then to get back to your tree, you hit Win Kledos. You also see that you only received, when you did your analysis, you only got one most parsimonious tree. That tree is eight steps long. It has a consistency index of 87 and a rescale consistency index of 85. Okay, so you have all of your statistics here, and so what you should do is, in your notebook, you should write this down. Okay. But you can also just go ahead and save this so that you can open it up again. So I'm going to call this Test oops, Morphology. Okay. And it'll ask me if I want to save all my trees. Absolutely. Okay, so let's go back to our tree. All right, so now what we need to do is, I, I, I don't like the way that this tree looks. And so one of the things I do is I change the, the style of the tree to a rectangular style. And I also like all of my taxa to be lined up to the right. And so I align my taxa. Okay, so here's my tree. The issue is, though, is that we also need to label our characters and our character state transitions on our tree. So we do that by going into hash marks, and we want to map our characters. So what it has done is it has mapped the characters on the tree, and you don't see the numbers or anything like that, but it's showing you that, that the black circles always in Winkley to Nona represent homologous characters, 
and the white circles represent homoplasia's character. So that's the first thing you need to know. But we also want to see what, which characters are changing where. Okay, so here there's a change in character one, here character two, three, four, five. Remember I'm using the example from your exam here so you can see which characters I'm talking about. Okay. So we have our characters labeled, that's good. We know which ones are homoplasious versus homologous. So now what we want to do is we want to label our character state transitions. Okay. And in order to show how it is that the character state changed, you have to press number hash marks twice. So here you can say, see character 4, which if you look at your data matrix is flower color, there was a change from 0 to 1 or from yellow to red flowers. Okay. If you notice, you can't really see the character state transition for character 3. And the way that you solve that is by actually changing the hash mark font. And I use a hash mark font of 4. Now you're going to look at this and say, Dr. Porterelli, I can't even read this. Don't worry about that um, because when you save this as a meta file and you open it up into in a um, in a photo editing program or even in insert it into Word, you'll see that you can actually see these things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a tree meta file, which will save it as an image that we can then open up or insert into open up into a photo editing software program or that we can just insert directly into Word and I'm going to call this test morphology. Okay, it's going to save it as a .emf file so I press save. Okay, so everything's saved. I want to show you what this, this file will look like now. So I'm just going to minimize this. And I'm going to open up my super awesome folder. It's, it will saves everything into the super awesome folder. I'm going to open up the tree and you'll see what I'm talking about. So you can really clearly see this is character 1, 2, and there's a transition from a character state of 0 to 1 here for character 2. Okay, so you can see the character state transitions really clearly in the meta file that you produced. Okay, so that's how we would deal with our morphological data matrix. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to exit out and then I'm going to open up and analyze our molecular data. So you go to WinClata. This time we're going to open up our molecular example in our folder. Okay, here you can see all the A, C, T's, and G's. Occasionally what will happen is, is WinClata will open up your molecular data and it'll look like zeros and ones. And the way that you change that is you go to View and you click DNA or numeric mode. You know, so you can see that it changed all of the DNA coding into numbers. Let's change it back to DNA. Okay, so you can see all our all your ACTs and Gs. So now we're going to analyze this data set exactly the same way. Boom. There's our tree. What's really cool is um, that it is actually defaulting to show the character numbers on top and the character state transitions. And it's even using the same font we used last time. So the computer program can be very pretty smart. If it doesn't do this for you when you analyze your data, all you have to do is use the same steps we used before with the um, morphological matrix to get it to do this. Okay. So let's go back to our Win Data screen and let's save our matrix so we don't lose it. Call this test molecular. And save. Okay. And then we're going to go back to our WinClados interface. We're going to make sure that we write down all of our data here, which is the tree is seven steps long, the consistent the consistency index is hundred, the rescale consistency index is hundred. Okay. We're going to want to save this meta file test molecular. And now when we open up this molecular tree, you can see all of the characters okay, that changed. So character 4 was the first one that changed. And it was from a G to a C. And if you go into 
your matrix, you'll see, or if you look at the exam, you'll see that that change is true. So here's your molecular tree. It looks really nice. So now you have both a morphological and a molecular tree to um, show in your project. Of course, it would be with the data in that project, for that particular project. One other thing that you're going to encounter with your project is when you analyze your morphological tree, you're actually going to get more than one most parsimonious tree. That's very, very light. It's very, very likely that that will happen. It's not 100% that that will happen, but in most likely you're going to get more than one mars most parsimonious tree. In that case, you're going to have to ask the computer to compute a consensus tree. And I just want to show you how to do that. Even though we only have one tree here, I want to show you how to compute a uh, consensus tree. So say down here we have tree 1 of 8. And we say, okay, we need the computer program to create a consensus tree, okay, which is a really good way to show a conservative um, hypothesis for your particular data. So you'll go to consensus, consensus compromise, and you're going to ask it to do a strict consensus tree, so the most conservative type of consensus tree you can put together. And it'll do that. And so it's showing me my consensus tree as the second tree here. Of course, it's the same as my first tree because I only had one tree. So when it computed a consensus, it was essentially computing a consensus of one tree. Okay. In your data matrix, if you had eight trees, your consensus tree will be displayed as the ninth tree. Okay. And so you will be able to see that consensus tree and then use it in your report. 